it's summertime and the cooking should be cheap and easy. Welcome to Meals with Maria. I am so happy to be bringing you my top 10 favorite summer budget meals. These are not complicated. They are simple and delicious. I know we're always looking for like warm casseroles in the winter. These are the opposite of that. You're gonna love them in the summertime and they're not gonna break the bank. We're starting with a marinated London broil with dill potatoes and tomato salad. This is just quintessential summer for me. This is joy in a meal. So you can see that I found some London broil and hey, the coloring may be a little bit different. That's okay because mostly they inject it with the coloring and that's why it kind of like turns, you know, at some point. It's fine. The meat is absolutely fine. It has something to do with the injection. So I'm going to marinate this. Normally I would use a Ziploc bag, but I didn't have any. <laughs> I just forgot to grab some at the store. So I put it in a Rubbermaid, which was fine. You want to use three quarters of a cup of oil. You can use olive oil or you can use um, vegetable oil. In this case, I had vegetable oil. Again, I need to go to the store because <laughs> I didn't have um, enough olive oil either. And then using a quarter cup of honey and just want to put that in there as well. One quarter cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And I feel like that is like what makes this recipe so special. When you're mixing soy sauce and red wine vinegar, it doesn't seem normal, but it is absolutely delicious. Putting a teaspoon of ginger, if you have fresh ginger, go for it. It would be even better. Now I'm grating in two cloves of garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, it would be fine with garlic powder as well, but fresh garlic is definitely gonna kick it up a notch. Now you just wanna mix everything together and I wanna make sure that my steak is well covered and you can marinate this in the fridge up to 24 hours. Now for the potatoes, I'm just using this trio bag. I think I got it like on clearance, but this has three different colors. I'm gonna boil these until they are tender. Here you're just looking for little potatoes, so it doesn't matter whether just the yellow ones or just the purple ones, any kind will do, whatever you like. While the potatoes cook, I'm just gonna make up our tomato salad. That's gonna consist of about a quarter cup of red wine vinegar and two tablespoons of olive, uh, olive oil. Now you see in this, my proportions are not quite the way I'm explaining it because I kind of messed up on my first tomato salad when I made this uh, and I put way too much oil. That's pretty much all that I did. It's just way too much oil. So you want to make sure you do your quarter cup of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons of olive oil, about a teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of sugar. Now this is going to be to taste. If it feels like a little bit too vinegary, go ahead and add a little bit more sugar. I know it seems like a lot of sugar, but it's what makes this so delicious. And then a sprinkling of salt again to taste. And then you're going to want to get the vine ripe best tomatoes you can. I would say if you're getting these at the grocery store, I kind of wouldn't bother with this tomato salad. This tomato salad has to be like that farm, fresh farm stand tomato. You can see how at the top, they kind of have like the little sides splitting. That's how you know that it's perfectly ripe and it's fresh as can be. And you see how red these are. I got these at a local farm stand in my area and I'm obsessed. They are just so delicious because part of what actually makes the salad so good is the juice from the tomato. So if you don't have a juicy tomato, it's really just not as good. So you can only have these when you can get fresh tomatoes from a farm stand. <laughs> and so you want to cut your tomatoes into um, some wedges. And that's the shape that I like to go with them. And just obviously cut out the tops of the tomatoes and put that in. So two large tomatoes is a perfect amount for my family. And I still end up eating most of it because I'm just obsessed with this tomato salad. <laughs> and you just want to let this kind of marinate. And I actually put it in the fridge a little bit. So I'll just take it and make it ahead of time and then put it in the fridge while everything else cooks. So once my potatoes are cooked, I put about a um, probably three tablespoons of butter into a large pan over high heat. And then you can see that I'm slicing up my larger potatoes. You wanna make sure that you slice these in half so that you can actually put the flat side down and it makes this amazing like crispy side to the potato. And then we're gonna add in a sprinkling of salt, probably about a teaspoon to two teaspoons. Definitely be generous with your salt, as well as a garlic powder. Go ahead and add that on. And some dill. I'm using some dried dill, because that's what I had. If you have fresh dill, that is going to put this at a new level. Like fresh dill is 10 times more amazing. I just didn't happen to have it at the time that I was cooking this. But you really, you see how it's kind of like sizzling on the edges? You really want to get crispy edges and that's why we're cooking this over high because your potatoes at this point are already cooked and you're just crisping them up. In the meantime, I have my steak. I have my grill set to high and I'm just going to place 
my linen broil that's now marinated for 24 hours onto the grill for about four to five minutes on each side. You can see that this is not a extremely thick cut of meat, so you don't need to cook it for too long. My meat did come out a medium rare for this amount of time, so you can cook it for longer if you'd like yours more of a medium or a medium well. You can see that my potatoes have really crisped up now, and you can see that golden brown on the parts that were uh, the, the cut side down, and that's, those are just my favorite. I always try and grab those out, which is kind of selfish of me. But And here you can see our steak come off the grill, our potatoes, and the tomato salad came out of the refrigerator. So it's just lightly chilled. You can see the color in that. Everything is just really red. And this is absolutely amazing. So this is our quintessential summer meal. When you slice the London broil, you wanna slice it so that you're kind of like the opposite of the way that the grain is going. And that way it'll be eagerly easy to slice and eat. And I really hope that you make this. This is just amazing. And hey, have a glass of red wine with it too. This next recipe is for grilled boneless skinless chicken thighs. I am just using some Newman's own Parmesan garlic dressing that I had in the refrigerator. I'm gonna add about half that container to a bag with a couple of pounds of those. And then we're gonna pop them on the grill on high and cook them so fast. I also grabbed a chopped dinner kit and if you have like a coupon on there, make sure to give that to the person at the counter because mine did not go through. So I'm kind of bummed about that. But you can sometimes find these on clearance at Walmart for like $1.98, which is a really good deal. And for me, sometimes it's just easier, cheaper, and at least I'm not eating dining out when I wanna grab something fast for a busy night or a hot night. I don't mind spending a couple bucks because I'm gonna spend a lot less than I would if I was gonna order food. I like to just add the toppings in and then I'll add anything that I have around the house that is a good choice. So uh, you can see on the side there, I have some shredded cheddar cheese. And if I had some diced avocado, I would add that in. If I have some bacon, I would add some bacon bits in. You can add whatever you like to this and really beef it up and add extra stuff. You could do like a sliced cucumber or some tomato. Just take what you have in the house and make your salad even better than it originally was. The boneless skinless thighs cook up so quick no matter what way you're cooking them. On the grill, they're about five minutes on each side on high. And in the oven, you could do them about 20 minutes at 350 degrees. You could also pan sear them for about five minutes on each side and they would be delicious. They are so juicy and so good. I just grabbed some leftover of my rice aroni meal from the night before because it was a good side and it was quick and serve that with our salad and our chicken. In the heat of the summer, I might grab some really cheap corn on the cob and serve that as well. What did you just say? Five. <laughs> yeah, but how do you feel about it? You said I love this type of chicken. Because it tastes yummy. For this next recipe, I'm gonna make some Greek chicken kebabs. So I am going to use those boneless chicken thighs again, but you could also use some boneless skinless chicken breast and just cut them up into strips. I'm gonna marinate this in a simple Greek dressing from Ken's, and I usually buy this on sale for about $2, and I'm gonna use about half of the container, so it's about a dollar's worth of dressing, or you could alternatively make your own Greek marinade, and I will put a recipe for that down below. But for me, this is a quick, simple summer meal, and it is so, so good with this Greek dressing. I'm just gonna put this in the refrigerator with a cover on it for up to 24 hours, but you can just do a couple hours, and it still tastes great. And a meal like this is the perfect opportunity for me to have some peppers, which I do love and my husband can avoid in this and it's not gonna make anything taste like peppers. So I have a red pepper, a yellow pepper, a zucchini. You can make kebabs out of absolutely any vegetable that you love that you wanna put on the grill. These are just the ones that I chose. Some summer squash is also a good option. Eggplant is also great. Really, whatever you have on hand, especially in the summer months, these things are more abundant and you can get them at like a farm stand. Sometimes I see farms on the side of the road that someone's selling them for like 25 cents. So it's almost too inexpensive not to buy and throw in a kebab and get something healthy and fresh.
Now I'm gonna use some of this Greek dressing and actually marinate these as well. So once I have them all finished, I'm just gonna put them in a nine by 13 and pour some of that over there. And you can let these sit at the exact same time that you let your chicken sit. And it just gives them a little bit of flavor. I don't know how much it you know gets inside of the vegetables, but I think that the flavor is delicious. Now I'm just gonna take my chicken pieces and skewer them. I find that even though maybe it's pretty to put the chicken and the vegetables on the same skewer, it cooks a lot better to cook those things separately because they're gonna cook at different times at different speeds. And the vegetables actually sometimes take longer than a small piece of chicken like this. And so you'll end up undercooking your vegetables or overcooking your chicken. So it's better to just keep those things separate so that you can cook them at the right time. This is a family favorite in that even my in-laws request it when we go on vacation together every year. It's one of the meals that I make out of the few that I do and they do and we kind of switch off, but they remember it and they love it and it's great because kids like it and adults like it. And you just wanna cook this on the grill on high heat for about five minutes on each side, but you do wanna make sure that that chicken is cooked all the way through. So always make sure to check that your juices are running clear and it's cooked all the way through. I do find that the vegetables often take a little bit longer. So you may wanna do those six or seven minutes on each side. You can see I'm kind of like grabbing it to make sure that it's cooked. And I'm gonna place those on a plate and we are going to enjoy. I do also like to serve this with the garlic butter rice from my rice video. And I will put that rice video down below for you in the description box if you wanna check out some different rice recipes. The rice recipe is also a hit with the in-laws and my sister-in-law is like, it's life-changing, it's so good. So in this particular night, I did not make that rice because I was just going quick and easy and I just had some fresh bread that I had pulled out of the oven. I was like, that's gonna be our starch today. But on other nights, especially if it's like a colder night or something, I may make rice inside and do that garlic butter rice that is absolutely fantastic. You can also see that I made a ton of chicken because this is an amazing meal prep. This is a great thing to put in meal prep boxes for the week for lunch because there's so much chicken and vegetables and it reheats really well. If you don't have a grill, this actually ends up being a great sheet pan meal. So you can actually mix together all those sliced pieces of chicken and your vegetables, put them on a sheet pan and bake them at about 400 degrees for 25 minutes. For this next recipe, I'm making grilled chicken tenders and grilled sweet potatoes. This would also be a really good sheet pan meal. To make your chicken tender marinade, add a quarter cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of lemon juice, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one clove of grated or minced garlic, and one teaspoon of salt. Mix all that together, and then you can add in about a pound or more of chicken tenders and if chicken tenders tend to be on the more expensive side, so you can actually take a chicken breast and slice it lengthwise to make almost like a faux chicken tender, and that still works out really well, and it's super delicious. The good thing about having smaller pieces like this is that the marinade covers and coats more pieces of the chicken. So if you put like a full chicken breast in here, it would be harder for the marinade to penetrate the inside of the chicken. You wanna place those in the refrigerator and marinate for at least 20 minutes or up to eight hours. And then I have an entire three pound bag of sweet potatoes. And I was like, you know what? We're just gonna cook all of these up because they are good for the kids, good for the baby. They're great for the week. So I wanted to have leftovers and extras. And sweet potatoes are so inexpensive. This whole bag was $2.79. And that was plenty of sweet potatoes for more than one day. Then you just wanna cut your sweet potatoes into quarter inch wedges. And we are gonna coat the slices with olive oil and a little sprinkle of salt. Next, you wanna make a cilantro lime dressing to put over the sweet potatoes once they're grilled, and this is phenomenal. You want a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil or whatever oil you have, a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm just using that cheap stuff from the Dollar Tree, or you can use fresh if you have it, and then a quarter cup of finely chopped fresh cilantro. Cilantro is so inexpensive, but I think you could also use some dried cilantro if that is all you have. It's still gonna make a great dressing, a great flavor for these sweet potatoes. 
You just wanna grill the sweet potatoes over high heat for about three to six minutes on each side. Kinda of depends on the hot spots on your grill or how hot your grill is. These would also be amazing in the oven at about 425 degrees for 20 minutes and you just wanna flip them halfway through. Depending on how many potatoes you're cooking, you may wanna cook the chicken at the same time or you can add it once most of your potatoes are cooked. You can see I've taken plenty of them off at this point and then I added in the chicken. You also wanna cook that chicken over high heat for about three to four minutes on each side. It cooks really quick. And once your sweet potatoes are all cooked, you just wanna add them to a bowl and then pour that dressing right over the top. I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. It's not something I ever thought to do until I had tried this recipe, but now I am completely hooked and this is a summer favorite of ours. I am so psyched on it. If you do wanna cook those chicken tenders in a different way, they would be great pan seared for about five minutes on each side and they would get a nice crust on them and they're gonna taste phenomenal. This was our dinner that night. I did make up a couple hot dogs because I think for some reason I had promised the kids hot dogs, but the chicken and the hot dogs and the sweet potatoes were great. The next meal is a grilled bruschetta chicken and look how amazing this turned out. I feel like I've been wanting to make something like this for years and I finally got around to it. So I just have three large tomatoes and I'm dicing them up. Now you may wanna remove some of the centers to make the bruschetta less, I don't know, like watery but i really don't mind that i just love a whole tomato i think that the flavor is in the whole thing so i'm slicing up my entire tomato and dicing it small to make an amazing bruschetta mixture so now that my tomatoes are chopped i'm going to add about a teaspoon of sliced um, basil but honestly you can add more than that like go to town, add as much basil as you like. <laughs> the basil's really, really good. Uh, personally, you know, go to town, whatever you wanna do. And then I'm just gonna top this with a sprinkle of salt and pepper. Two teaspoons of minced garlic, similar to the basil. Do whatever you want on this. Add as much as you like. If you're a garlic lover, there's really not gonna be too much in here. Especially if you have fresh garlic, it's gonna taste even better. I do have like the minced stuff that I just had in my fridge, but if you're cutting up a fresh piece of garlic, you're gonna be in good shape. Now I have cut two chicken breasts in half and I'm sprinkling with olive oil, salt, and pepper, as well as some Italian seasoning, about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning on these. And then I'm just gonna grill these up again about two minutes on each side on high. And uh, then I'm gonna put some fresh mozzarella right over the top. I think it recommended like one slice per each, but I was like, we're gonna do two because can't go wrong with that. I just cooked up some simple diced potatoes in the oven. I will put the recipe for that down below in the description box for you. And this is a compilation of favorites. So yes, I am pregnant in this video, but no, I am not currently pregnant. And then you can see after a few minutes, once our mozzarella has melted, the chicken has come off and I'm just gonna cover this with the bruschetta mixture. And after the chicken is covered with the bruschetta, I'm using that balsamic glaze, that pastine uh, brand, but I think they have like all different brands. You know, I know I've seen even like store-bought, uh, store brands of that these days. You can get it pretty much anywhere. And just covering this chicken up, sprinkling it with drizzling it with the glaze and sprinkling it with parmesan cheese and you'll see that this is like the most beautiful thing you have ever seen i'm in love with this dish and i can't wait to make it again for the family the next meal is a weight watchers barbecue chicken salad which just looked so delicious in the picture i was like i have to try this and it's super interesting because you end up making your own barbecue sauce for this. And as you can see, this is such a colorful salad. Like how could you not want to eat it? So to get this recipe started, I'm gonna start by making the barbecue sauce. And we're gonna use a half a cup of just canned tomato sauce. I happen to have Goya. Then one tablespoon of honey mustard. One tablespoon of barbecue seasoning mix two teaspoons of brown sugar. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now 
Now the recipe calls for a pound of chicken breast, but I probably have closer to two pounds and the chicken breasts I have are really thick. So I've decided to cut them in half and trim off any excess fat. That's gonna give the perfect amount of chicken for my family of four to each have one slice of chicken. Actually, the kids are gonna have they just split one they don't eat too much um and then we'll have an extra one left over or if dan wants to have some extra on his so i'm just going to add some salt and pepper and then i'm going to add these to a high heat grill personally mine has a temperature knob on it so it goes up to 500 degrees and i'm gonna cook them at 500 degrees for about two minutes on each side and then we'll put some of the barbecue sauce on in the meantime, I'm gonna get the salad started by cutting up some of the romaine lettuce. You can either cut this with a knife like I'm doing, it doesn't bother me at all, but I know that some people tend to believe that it gets bitter if you don't tear it, so tear it up if you want. It's really all up to you how you wanna do it. I personally like a really lettucey salad, so I'm using quite a bit of lettuce, um, but I know some people like a little bit less, so all up to you how you do this. That's the awesome thing about salads. You can kind of make them your own and you know, somewhat follow the recipe, but just put like the same ingredients in and as much as you like of each and there you have it so here is my chicken after two minutes on each side and i'm just going to put some of that barbecue sauce over each side and baste it up and within a couple more minutes this should be cooked up you just want to make sure that your chicken is definitely cooked all the way through not one of those things that you want to have a little pink in the middle or anything like that um, but this cooked up so fast and so easy just because they were thin slices of chicken breast and I find that when you're not cooking those big ones, they come out so much juicier too. Like if you cook one of those big chicken breasts, it just takes forever and they get so dry. So I pretty much always slice mine in half and I find that it's much better that way. So for the toppings on the salad, you just need two cups of diced grape tomatoes, as well as one red pepper sliced up, as well as a quarter cup of sliced scallions. So in addition to my tomatoes, peppers, and scallions, I've also rinsed off some black beans in a can and opened a can of corn and drained that. We also have some semi-soft goat cheese and we'll be covering the salad with some light ranch dressing. And actually, I think I probably just used full fat ranch dressing because that's what we had. But here you can see that I put all my diced vegetables on. Now I'm putting on some corn, some black beans. Go ahead and make this what you want. If you're more of a bean lover, add more beans. If you want more corn, add more corn. However you wanna do it, that's the amazing thing about salads. You can make it your own. And here I'm just gonna crumble up some of that goat cheese. I just have like a log of it. You can definitely buy crumbled goat cheese too. I think for some reason I did not have the ability to get that this time. And I'm just putting it over the top and yep, fingers are getting messy. That's just how I'm doing it. It's what we're doing and it turned out just fine. next recipe is for a marinated grilled chicken burger and i enjoyed this so much the whole family loved it they loved it so much that they asked to take it on vacation with us on our upcoming vacation so that's how i know that this is a huge win and this is so simple i'm just going to marinate our chicken we're going to use some chicken breast to make a chicken burger with one cup of oil a half a cup of brown sugar one tablespoon of smoked paprika a teaspoon of chili powder one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder. And then you can either do a fresh crushed clove of garlic, or I had this like garlic grinder that I decided to use because I was out of fresh garlic. You could also add a little bit more garlic powder too. So whatever you have on hand, go ahead and use that. Mix that all together and this makes an absolutely amazing marinade. This grilled chicken, once it came out, was so delicious. So again, I have pulled some chicken out of the freezer. I gave you some prices on chicken earlier. This is again, chicken breast. And to make four of these, you really need just about a pound. You're gonna slice them pretty thin because we're gonna put them on a burger with a burger bun. We're gonna get 
plenty of items on top of that. So you don't really need like a huge chicken breast plus that would take forever to cook. So I'm slicing my chicken breasts in half and I happen to have three around cook a little bit extra tonight. Just so wanna make sure that they are submerged in that marinade. We're gonna cover them up and refrigerate them in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. Now the beautiful thing about a sandwich like this or a chicken burger as they're calling it, is that you can put whatever you have on hand on top of it. You can make it your own. So I happen to have a half of an avocado and I'm gonna slice that up. I have half of a tomato. I have some cheddar cheese. So we're just gonna use those things to top our little chicken burgers with. And in my family, it's like everyone wants something different. Julian, my four-year-old loves the avocado. I like that too. My husband is more of like a just cheese and sauce guy. And my son, Tommy, who's six, is all about the ketchup, just ketchup and plain chicken and that's all he wants. But because I am always down to try new things and I want new ideas, I would love you guys to tell me down in the comments below what your favorite toppings or your most innovative toppings or the weirdest thing maybe you've even put on top of something like a grilled chicken sandwich. Now you wanna grill these over high heat for six to eight minutes on each side. But if you don't have a grill or a griddle or something like that, you can go ahead and put these in the oven and cook yeah. them at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. At its core, four of these chicken sandwiches with cheese and just cheese and chicken and burger buns is gonna run you $4.58. And then you can add whatever you want on the top. And I served mine with a little cucumber salad on the side. This next recipe is for an old favorite. It's just a simple grilled chicken thighs, bone in, skin on with barbecue sauce. You can get bone in, skin on chicken thighs for as low as 99 cents a pound these days. And I did check at my local Walmart, you can get the 10 pound bag of chicken drumsticks again for $5.47. And that's $2.73 if you need like five pounds of them, which is gonna be a perfect dinner with some barbecue sauce. So you can trade this in or out depending on what you have. You can do chicken thighs or chicken drumsticks. Both are delicious. You just slather them in your favorite barbecue sauce. You can get barbecue sauce at Walmart for $1.34 or they sell it at Dollar Tree for $1.25. So sometimes there's really good deals at the Dollar Tree when you wanna get something like pesto or barbecue sauce. Both are cheaper at Dollar Tree than they are at Walmart. So when I was cooking these, I kinda decided to do like a reverse sear on them. So I cooked them about 300 degrees in the grill for about 30 minutes. And then I turned my grill up and cooked them on the skin side down last. But many recipes are actually gonna have you put them skin side down first and then flip them over. So it's kind of your choice how you wanna do it. You do then wanna grill them for another 20 minutes at that lower temperature to make sure that they do get all the way cooked through. And I will put a baked recipe down below for you as well. Now for my sides, I am again using leftovers. My auntie Gail had brought over a Greek salad earlier in the day and we had tons left over. She always makes too much, but she is a great cook. So what are we gonna use for dinner that night? Our leftover salad. Don't be afraid of reusing salad, especially if it's only from that same day. I did have some extra feta too, so I'm like, let's just pop that on there. Being frugal is all about using what you have, no food waste, just using what's on hand. You can easily make up a very inexpensive salad with this and just do some greens and some cucumbers and tomatoes and that would taste delicious as well. Once everything was grilled, I just brought it over the table. We ate outside this particular night. So even a very, very inexpensive meal like this can taste so fabulous and make you feel so special when you eat it in a different environment. So sometimes just taking yourself out of your house, doing a picnic or eating outside if you have an outside area is amazing. There was also some leftover bread from our lunch. So I was like, perfect, we're just gonna slice that baby up. And you can get bread at Walmart, like a bakery bread for a dollar or find it on clearance for 50 or 70 cents. This meal was so amazing. It felt so gourmet. And if you bought the salad and the chicken drumsticks and the bread at Walmart, it would cost $7.58, but you can shave some off there if you buy clearance bread and you got your barbecue sauce at Dollar Tree, or you just use what you already have and you can make it for even less than that.
why not start with an old favorite using our dollar loaf of Walmart bread. You can get white or wheat. You can get so many slices for so cheap. We are going to make a very simple tomato sandwich, which is perfect this time of year. I also got some Pringles to go with my bread because I think they were the cheapest chips that I could find for a dollar thirty something. However, use whatever you have around your house, or you can even grab chips for a dollar twenty-five at the Dollar Tree. Had some light mayo. A full thing of that is two dollars and eighty cents. But I've also shared how to make that at home if you have oil and eggs at home. So I will make sure to put that video as well as a recipe down in the description box if you want to make your own. And then tomatoes, like I said, this time of year, hopefully you can get some at a farm stand nearby for next to nothing because they are in full bloom where I am. But if you can't, you can always just get them at the grocery store as well. And they're still really good because they are in season and they're relatively inexpensive. Depending on how many sandwiches you wanna make, you just wanna slice up a tomato or two or three into thinner slices. This is gonna be the main component of our sandwich. This is kind of the meat of the sandwich, but if you've never had a tomato sandwich, oh, I recommend you try it. And then make sure to salt those tomatoes. I am using a Malden finishing salt, so if you have something that's like a thicker salt, go ahead and do that. But regular salt will do as well. And then we're gonna make an aioli. So put two, three tablespoons of mayo into a bowl with another tablespoon of olive oil. I'm using about a teaspoon of dried basil, but if you have fresh, go ahead and use that. I think it was pouring rain when I made mine, so I wasn't about to go out and pick any. You could also use an Italian seasoning if you do not have basil because Italian has that basil in it. And then I'm adding a little bit of garlic powder to this and really anything that you like, go ahead and add it in. I'm also adding a little bit of red pepper flake just to give it a little bit of a zing. But if you do not like red pepper flakes, don't add that. Making an aioli is so cool because it's just based on what you have on hand. Just add a little bit of oil in there and whatever seasonings that you like and you're all good. Now I just toasted up my bread because I like a nice crispy toasted bread when I'm having a tomato sandwich. I just feel like it makes it feel more fancy. But if you wanna have a soft bread and not toast it, go ahead and do that too. And then you just wanna put your aioli onto your bread and put your tomato slices onto your sandwich as much or as little as you like. And it's that simple. This is just a gentle reminder that you don't need a lot of ingredients or a lot of money to make a very special meal. I wanna thank you so much for watching today. I hope you got some great inspiration for your summer budget meals. If you want some more, go ahead and click on this next video to get some light and cheap summer meals and make sure the next time you're on YouTube, you're watching Meals with Maria. I was out of use, now I